what we are going to discuss today in a couple of clips is what is MXB University? One of the lessons of MXB University is how to make sure that your brain understands where the data or opinions that are being presented to you is actually coming from. For instance, if you read an article on a website and you don't know who owns that website and what their motives or intentions for publishing that content and you're allowing that to go in your brain, we would put you in the dummy category. Right? I like capitalism and I like being clinical about it. So a lot of what I've done over the last 25 years is apply a very clinical and capitalistic view at the same time, based upon some of my exposure to people like Jerry Garcia or Robert Nesta Marley or Peter Tosh, I actually believe in the human experience at the same time. It's, a, it's an interesting balance of how things go back and forth and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Money is not going to make you happy, but you need a lot of money to actually have an experience in life especially if you're going to live in somewhere like the United States or in some of the places that we live that are obviously higher taxed or right now with what we're dealing with inflation. It's not going to make you happy, but it's going to give you more options. Secondly, if you're going to live in the United States, money is some level of one of the statistics that you're being tracked on, just like if you were a baseball player, you would have your batting average tracked, right? You would have your ERA if you were pitcher tracked. And that's really data, right? Um, you know, I started making a tremendous amount of money in my 20s before really anyone um, that I knew was making that type of cash. Um, we can talk about that later. So I believe also in the American dream. I'm an institutionalist, right? I understand the Constitution is a broken document. I like the Declaration of Independence because it got us away from get caste society um, and it got us away from uh, no taxation without representation and it got us away from um, having a king in our lives, right? Um, and it got away and it got us to democracy and got us away from, you know, a monarchy. Um, it also got us to separation of church and state, which has unfortunately been a little mix, mixed up. So, um, what is the American dream? Okay, the American dream is very simple. Okay, it's about being able to get access to the capital markets here in the United States in one way or another, have children, be able to support those children, be able to support those children's education, and leave those children in a better position to execute on the American dream than the parents actually did. So for instance, the opportunity that I was given, based upon what my father was given, I was given a much better opportunity based on what they had done to get me to a place to go out and, and execute on the American dream. Wealth inequality is a massive problem in this country. Okay? So one of the points of MXP University is to really try and help break with wealth inequality. Over the last 25 years, I have hired more bartenders, more people who couldn't get a job, more people who started at minimum wage, 10 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, and um, they ain't making that money anymore. They're making a lot of money, right? And they'd be able to go out, and we were able to teach them lots and lots of skills. For myself right now, um, as the CEO of Yugo We Go, which we will keep running, you know, we're, um, I'm officially retiring. Don't call me unless you have a million dollars to pay me, like right off the bat, because I'm not interested. Um, I'm going to keep doing recruiting because one of the first parts of any time I bring someone into business, whether they're a bartender from a bar, whether they've come as a bouncer, whether they've come as a phone sex person. I teach them recruit because when you get a business up and running and it's doing well, guess what you need? You're gonna need a bigger boat. Guess what you gotta put in the boat? More bodies. And those bodies can't just be bodies, they have to be talent, or over time, you're just lowering the standards, right? What I really teach people to do, specifically in the last seven years, is how to become their own corporation, right? So. 
So Jaleel, yeah. tell me name, full name, and why you joined MXB University. My name is Jaleel Emilio Rodriguez, and I joined MXB University to understand how business works, how corporations work, and also to be a candelabra, and to be the most efficient at everything that I'm doing at the highest level. That's okay. why I joined MXB University for it. And why you joined MXB University? I joined MXB University because I want to learn more about business and how it operates and how to get to the top without having to deal with the the social construct that comes with build, uh, being inside of corporations and working your way up. This will be a full scholarship for you guys, right, as you have internships at UGO, we go. Um, the first business that you're going to learn is the staffing business. Um, the online site, the YouTube site is up. Um, it'll eventually turn into a paid site um, once we get the viewership sh sh up. But we're also gonna put a lot of free videos up. Um, for instance, I'm gonna teach the entire recruiting business and I'm just gonna give it away for free. Um, there are things that we'll need to get paid for later like my IP around Shield Time and Love that we built or specifically when we get into more advanced selling techniques um, when these guys learn how to sell and the reseller business and those types of things. Um, and then certainly, you know, the real keys to the kingdom, which will definitely be part of the paid site, is all of the MXB lessons on how do you build company culture, how do you build uh, actual people, how do you really focus on skills development, right? Squeaker, right? And how do you um, ultimately build um, companies that can scale, or as we like to say here at Yugo We Go, scale with soul, right? Where you don't lose the moral fabric of people and what's important and being a good person just for the bottom line. So, part two. Before you listen to any, you need to know who they are, right? If you don't know their first name and their last name and where they're from, Right? and you're listening to them spout off about stuff, you can't really understand the source of that information. Right, You can't confirm and verify that this is credible. Right, So just like if someone said, hey, I'm gonna take you up and teach you how to, do, to jump out of a plane. You might wanna ask them, have you ever jumped out of a plane before? If they're like, no, this is my first time, this probably isn't the person you want to listen to, okay? If someone's gonna take you scuba diving and take you down 100 feet, guess what? You might want to know how long they've been scuba diving for, okay? Well, same thing when it comes to business information or life information. You want to know where that's coming from, okay? So, I'll give you a little idea for where I'm from. <clears throat> Go back to the tabs. I was born in this town, okay? It's called Greenwich, Connecticut. You can see, you know, medium household income excluding capital gains, 142, 272. You know, uh, home to two of the wealthiest zip codes in Connecticut with average adjusted gross incomes of 638,721. You know, extremely large estates. We had an estate here sell for $190 million. Um, and ultimately, a very, very nice place to live. So, um, this is where I grew up. This was my parents' house when we grew up. It's a beauty. And my father um, worked for a company called Merrill Lynch, which a few years ago during the 08 crisis uh, was sold to uh, Bank of America. So this was one of the larger brokerage houses, more successful brokerage houses in for New York for a long time. My father worked here until he opened up his hedge fund afterwards. This is where my mother worked. She was one of the head nurses there for many years. She then went on to build what's known as Greenwich Adult Daycare to help with um, elderly people needing daycare instead of just having go to home, which was very revolutionary at the time. So as we, I like to say all the time, we'll save your life, but we're gonna charge you, okay? Um, I went to school here, okay? The motto at this school, this is an all boys school. The motto at this school is courage, honor, truth. It's basically a Terminator factory, okay? If you go to where 
everyone goes to school. I think seven people went to Princeton last year out of a class of 50. Okay. Um, incredible athletics, incredible alumni. Um, I went here from fourth grade to 12th grade. Right? Um, played every sport, did everything. Now, I was lucky enough along that route to run into the Grateful Dead. So the Grateful Dead started in 1965. In 1988, I got taken to my first rock concert at a place called Madison Square Garden, and the Grateful Dead was actually playing. And this guy was playing, and he was on fire. His name is Jerry Garcia. He's my guy. If you want to know who I work for, I work for Jerry Garcia. And then Jerry died in 1995. This was not good for a young guy like me to have Jerry die when I just turned 21. So I started going down on brief trips to the island of Jamaica to start hanging out with the Rastafarians. And I started hanging out with a good guy who's an older Rasta named Elvis Winston. And he taught me a lot about Bob Marley. He taught me a lot about Peter Tosh. And they would bring me up to the hills and they taught me a lot about growing a plant called cannabis because they were growing fields and fields and fields of it. They pushed very hard that I convert to Rastafarianism. It was a little too much like Irish Catholic. It was a little too close to religion for me. But over time, over the years, I have become what's known as a Dostafarian. Right? So I am a deadhead raised by the Rastas. Right? But deep down inside, the songs of both Robert and Mr. Tosh and Mr. Garcia, they're not songs for me. They're hymns of what, how I live my life. Right? When I say things like, way down to discover that you could be the eyes of the world, I actually mean way down to discover that you could actually be the eyes of the world. Right? When I say one way or another this darkness has to give, I actually mean one way or another this darkness has to give. When I say stop that train I'm leaving, I actually mean stop that fucking train I'm leaving. When I say the, co the stone that the builder refused shall be the head corner stone, I'm a builder baby, hear my hammer throw, don't you pick and refuse me, because the things you refuse will be the things you can lose. Do you hear me? Do you hear what I say, child? Actually means what I just said. It's not a song. Okay? So over the years, what I've been doing inside of companies is putting the Rastafarian, Grateful Dead, uh, Brunswick, and lastly, pull up Gettysburg College, right? I went to Gettysburg. So when I went to Gettysburg, I studied the government. Okay, this is a very good school in Pennsylvania. Okay, big in international relations, big in government. I studied things like all the spy services. I studied things like the debt. I studied three branches of government. I studied executive power. I studied salt treaties, the nuclear war, all the wars, the Middle East, right? Early Rome, Mesopotamia. I took Latin for almost 10 years, Spanish for six, right? I studied, and I studied. I studied polling. I studied, um, um, I actually then went to a place called Flinders. I went over to Australia and I studied government in Australia, which is interesting because you're basically, if you're an American in the class, you're responsible for almost everything that the United States has ever done. Uh, so it gets a little dicey. So this was a very good university I studied down in Adelaide. Okay. Once again, because of where I was from, I had access to tons and tons of education. That's really what the white privilege really gets you. It's the access to all the information. Now, when I got out of school, I didn't take any money. My mom bought me a couple suits, and after that I was on my own. And um, for the most part, I've done a pretty good job of that, other than you know when I got divorced, I needed some help. Um, but that was later in life. Uh, so what MXB University is, just like in Fuel Diamond Love, is I'm throwing the rope back over. Right? I'm going to teach you not only how I built all these companies, and the theories and the themes behind them. I'm going to teach you about shit you need to know, right? Right now, to give you an idea, this is the curriculum. 